Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show today. I am Ben Graham. I'm so glad to have you joining us today. And uh, man, before we get started, I got to say thank you to our sponsors. This episode is being sponsored by Freedom Place. And uh, you need to know about Freedom Place. It is changing the way you market your business, your church. And what it's doing, it's taking the money that is made. First off, it's making it affordable. And it's changing the way that they market. It's putting the money back into your pocket instead of into these big corporations. So if you want to know more, go to freedomplace.com forward slash Ben, and you can get all the information about it. And then I also want to say thank you to our sponsor, Old U.S. Outdoor. Old U.S. Outdoor is a great clothing company, and uh, they're uh, founded by a veteran, and you need to know about them. Go to oldusoutdoor.com. Awesome. All right. Today, we've got a pretty sensitive subject. If you've maybe watched the news, maybe looked at the theater to see what was playing, you've heard that there is a movie called Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom is playing. Sound of Freedom is an amazing story, a true story about Tim Ballard, uh, who works with the Operation Railroad Group, uh, rescuing kids that have been trafficked. And he primarily was going to other countries, rescuing children. It's played by Jim Caviezel. I actually met Jim Caviezel several years ago. I was speaking at an event um, and uh, I was at the Opryland Hotel speaking to about 3,000 people. I go backstage when I get done. Jim Caviezel is there and Eric Trump and we start talking. And that night uh, we got to see a screening of Sound of Freedom and uh, knew that it was going to be an amazing movie. It took several years for them to get this out. And part of the reason for that is because of all of the grief that they've gotten over doing a movie that talks about the problem with human trafficking. And if you've noticed in the media, uh, especially the liberal media, the the mainstream media, they've kind of kind of downplayed Sound of Freedom as being conspiracy theorists, kind of downplaying what is going on. And yet it is continuing to do amazing things in the box office because people really uh, they they know what's going on. They're learning about what's going on. And they're they're saying, wait, this is a true story. We need to know about it. And it's resonating with people because uh, we all know that children are precious. The Bible says that they're a gift from God. They're a heritage of the Lord. And he blesses us with children. And so these children that God give us, uh, they're so important. And, and of course, any parent that loves their kid, they're going to do all they can to protect their child. If there's a, a, a stray dog that's trying to attack them, they're going to put their body in harm to save their children. If there is uh, a child that falls into water that can't swim and they're drowning, they're going to do what they can to rescue them. We all want to protect our children. And if there are people who are trying to take our children and sell them into slavery, we're going to do all we can to stop them. And so here is the real message today is this, perhaps you say, you know, this doesn't really affect me because your child is safe. First off, there's a lot of people who thought their children were safe that they ended up having them get kidnapped and many crazy things have happened to them. Just recently, two boys, ages uh, 11, I'm sorry, 12 and 14, uh, just across the Tennessee state line in Kentucky uh, disappeared and they still have yet to find them. They believe they were kidnapped. Uh, They don't know what's going on. We hear about these kind of stories all the time and we're finding out more and more just what is going on here in America with human trafficking. And so because of that, we understand there's a responsibility and our hearts break when we hear what is happening to these children and we want to do all we can to rescue them. This isn't just a problem uh, in South America or in Africa or some foreign country. It's a problem here. And many believe, and I've heard this quoted and I think this is accurate, that America is the largest uh, country for human trafficking. And if that is true, listen, First off, God forbid that that's happening here, that we would allow that to happen. But second, it's time we wake up. It's time our legislators wake up. It's time that we quit saying that this is a political issue. Uh, This isn't about uh, the left or right. This is a human issue. Humans are being kidnapped and trafficked and being uh, put into all kinds of scenarios of ungodly wicked things, that things that should never happen to a child That's what's going on. And so we've got to wake up. And today on this episode, we're going to talk about that. I've got some wonderful guests that you're going to hear from. And uh, we're going to dive into this a little bit because I think it's an issue that we cannot ignore. And I want to challenge you, listen, to listen, to hear uh, from our guests today, 
to study about what is going on. If you have not seen it, go watch Sound of Freedom. And then I want you to pray and ask God, what does he want you to do? How should you get involved? Because we've got to stop this evil thing that's happening in our country. No doubt this is of the devil. We've got to do something about it. So I hope you'll stay tuned today. Listen to some great guests that we have. We've got uh, a wonderful guest named Kevin, who used to be a part of 98 Degrees, and he's going to talk about some projects he's working on. Uh, sorry, Jeff. Uh, he's going to talk about some projects he's working on. Uh, we've got Kevin, also known as Rev, who is one of 13 children who was sold by his own parents. It's an incredible story. And then we've got Teddy Jr. You don't want to miss it, so stay tuned. He's one of the founding members of the internationally acclaimed multi-platinum Grammy-nominated group 98 Degrees, which has sold over 15 million albums with four top five radio singles. Uh, 98 Degrees albums have reached gold and platinum status in more than 60 countries around the world. After his, his success with 98 Degrees, Jeff embarked on his solo career uh, by touring with Jim Brickman and then single-handedly wrote and produced his first solo album, which was released as a joint venture. And uh, his album's first single produced a top 20 hit on both the Billboard, Billboard and R&R charts. Uh, Jeff's performed at the White House twice. He's made appearances on the Grammys, The Tonight Show, the American Music Awards, and so many other places. Uh, recently, uh, Jeff has been the executive producer of a TV series called Droned for the Discovery Science. He's done several TV, film, and music projects, got stuff in development for 2023. And uh, what I love is he is back on the road touring with 98 Degrees. They're set to tour in September and October of this year. Uh, Jeff recently partnered with legend uh, legendary production company, critical content to produce a documentary for Peacock uh, with his production company called Creative Collective. And uh, Jeff is doing so many great things. And I think the thing that is, excites me the most is Jeff is somebody who is getting in on the fight uh, against human trafficking. He's, he's getting in on this cause. And, uh, you know, so many people, Jeff, are afraid to touch this issue. And some people even deem this like a political issue. And to me, when it comes to something that is just so outrageous, it's not about Democrat, Republican. It's not about this side or that side. It's about right or wrong. Well, no question about it. And wow. I mean, thank you for that uh, amazing, illustrious <laughs> introduction. I mean, uh, I totally appreciate that. And, and obviously, uh, you know, it, it's a human thing. That's why it's called human trafficking. It's not a political thing. It, it shouldn't be polarizing. It should be something that you know, everybody's aware of, I think, obviously, with with the, the prevalence of the movie and and, uh, yeah, you know, all of the all of the attention that's being brought to this on social media uh, and, and long overdue attention. I think it's something that that everybody should be paying attention to and trying to, you know, an issue that, that des desperately needs to be solved. And, and it's been going on for for as long as anybody can probably remember or or knows about and maybe even longer, you know, so I think, you know, for me, uh, I fell into to this uh, through a friend of mine that I ended up creating a docuseries for and, and you had mentioned it a little bit earlier, but um, it, it, it was something that it fell into my lap that I, I wasn't really aware of when we started the project and, and have become a little bit educated on it and still learning as I go along. But uh, it's definitely an issue that that should be first and foremost. I know, obviously, there are a lot of things politically that people feel are more important or selfishly think apply to them. But with this, it's about something that can help humanity. Absolutely. And I think for a lot of people, I mean, you know, like me, I grew up in middle America. Um, you know, you really think when I thought of human trafficking, I thought it was something that was happening other parts of the world, had no clue what was going on here until somebody kind of brought it to my attention and I think it's not like for me, it's not that I wasn't concerned. I had no idea. And but when we know, you know, there's a quote in the Bible, there's a verse in the Bible that says to whom much is given, much is required. When we know certain things, it, you know, it says when we know to do good and we don't do it, you know, that's sin. And so when we know these things and we're not we're not tackling them, then that's when we're in the wrong. And so, you know, after you started on this docuseries, that's when you kind of found out what was going on. What was kind of your reaction when you learned just what was taking place here? Well, I mean, first of all, you know, um, I'm, I'm from the Midwest as well. I'm from Ohio. I believe one of your brothers or your siblings has a ministry in Maslin, Ohio, which is exactly where I'm from. But, um, you know, I, I was friends with the gentleman that sort of featured in his family is featured in this documentary. And we had known each other a couple of years. I mean, he's an ordained minister that 
helps a lot of the retired and active NFL players. And we had talked about a number of projects and, and, you know, I'd pick some of those projects and we're, you know, it's hit or miss in the entertainment business. It's really hard to get things picked up or get green lit. And there was some interest here and there. And then he said, Hey, you know, Jeff, have I ever talked about my family? And I was like, well, you know, I know your brother and you are really close and you do a lot of good things. And, and Rev, he goes by Rev, it's Kevin. And, and you're going to be talking to him a little bit later. And he was like, no, no, my family, you know, we were all sold. And I'm like, sold, what are you, what are you talking about? You know? And he said, no, our, each and every one of us in our family, we were bought and sold. And there, there are 12 of us, maybe even more 13 and, and, and so on and so forth. And it was shocking to me to hear this story. And I was like, wait a second, let me, let, let's press pause and it's almost like you buried the lead on the the most fascinating and interesting story about his life and where he came from and his background and his roots and we got into it and it was such a profound story that i was like this is it this is what we need to talk about and this was sort of previous to all of the the influx of of you know data we're receiving now through social media and and mainstream media and and you know the awareness that's sort of again, long overdue. And I was like, does this really exist? And, and, and to your point, it wasn't international. It was here in the United States. I'm like, so what did you do this? Did you guys grow up in a foreign country where, you know, this, where well, you assume you make these, these odd assumptions uh, because you don't, you are uneducated of where it, where it sort of was happening. And it was here in Kentucky and West Virginia and Florida. And, um, and so I was just blown away by it. And, and it, you know, this is a, a labor of love for me. We, we have been talking about this, making it into something, whether it's a docu movie or a docu series or wh- however we can get it made. I mean, we have been pitching it to a lot of the major networks and great co-production companies and, you know, people just didn't believe it. Uh, you know, and I, I've been in the industry for a long time, 25 years and, called some of my colleagues. They're like, this can't be real. And I'm like, no, it is real. Like they have typed out receipts in these stories. And what's fascinating about all, all of these kids that, you know, got sold off is, is they all ended up going in different directions, right. Based on where they grew up and the parents that took them in. And uh, it's, it's truly, truly an interesting and amazing story, but also, you know, immediately opened my eyes to what's going on and been going on for, a long, long time here. Well, and I think that's how we got uh, introduced. We, I actually uh, been working with a friend who has been rescuing kids both around the world and now especially working here in America for quite some time. He's a former special force. And we were talking about the need for a movie that really shows what's highlights what's going on here in America, because uh, Sound of Freedom has been amazing. It's, it's helping people get aware, but, but that's in another country. People need to know what's going on here in our own backyards. And so uh, I had I called a friend and I just happened to mention uh, what we were working on today and what our podcast was going to be about. And he's like, did I tell you about these people? You need to know about them. And we were looking for a story that fits, uh, you know, a narrative talking about what's going on here in America. So, I mean, you know, I think God just put this together and I'm excited about uh, the potential of putting this into a story that people can see. And it's it's a tough subject. It's not the uh, Friday night feel good movie. It's the movie that people need to see because it's truth and hopefully it'll wake people up. And I I think I saw correctly, my wife and I, we have four boys and we're getting ready to have our first granddaughter, uh, here in just a a couple weeks. I think I've seen you have five children. Is that correct? I I do. And congratulations. Yeah. So I'm remarried. Uh, my wife had two, two children from a previous marriage. I did. We have one together. So when we, we first got together, it was like the Brady Bunch. And, <laughs> and thankfully for, for us, it was synergistic with everything. And, you know, everything felt, felt like it was a, it was our, our real family and a lot of love. And That's and awesome. That Congratulations uh, to you as well. I mean, those are the true blessings. And although, you know, you, 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 uh, you know, gave example of a lot of the accolades, in my career, which I'm thankful. And it's great to be a part of all those things. And I never take it for granted and always express gratitude and I'm thankful for it. Um, the best thing that's ever happened in my life is my family. And that's what you do it for because all of that stuff, it's great to talk about. They're cool things for you and great achievements and very rare ones, but who do you share it with? You share it with your family. So, uh, you know, uh, it's been the best experience in my life. In fact, you know, I'm on my way to the airport now and I, I, I have my, my chauffeur, my, my son, my son's driving me to the airport. So, uh, you know, 
they're, they're good for a lot of things that make you uh, feel great about, you know, raising them the right way, but they're also good you know, for, for chores as well. <laughs> That's as well, right. So. I love it. Well, you know, one of the things that I was going to say is, you know, our children are so precious and we do anything for them. But I think a lot of people need to wake up to this reality because they think, well, that would never happen to me until you meet somebody who you find out they love their kids. They were protective. And and yet their child got kidnapped, got taken away. And we're hearing more and more of those kind of stories. And so we have two options. We can either sit back and wait until it happens to us and then get involved or we can we can get involved now. So that hopefully not only it never happens to us, but we can stop it from happening to other families. And, and I could just tell based on some of the pictures I've seen that, that you're a family man and, and, and love your, your kids that God's given you. And, and, you know, I think that's great. And, and, and they are, you know, one of our most valued uh, treasures that we've been given the, you know, the Bible says that children are a blessing. They're a, they're a gift from God. And so uh, how important it is that we care for them. And, and are you searching for financial wisdom rooted in timeless principles? Then look no further. Kirk Elliott Financial Wealth Advisor Firm is the best blend of biblical insights with expert financial guidance to navigate the stormy waters of an economic uncertainty. Kirk Elliott, renowned for his financial acumen, is your trusted guide through these turbulent times. With years of experience and a passion for biblical principles, Kirk brings clarity and purpose to every financial decision. Whether you're facing market fluctuation or seeking to align your wealth with your values, Kirk Elliott has the answers you need. No matter your background or experience, Kirk's approach is both approachable and effective. He'll help you understand how to protect your assets and make wise investments while staying true to your beliefs. When you go with Kirk Elliott, you can be confident that your finances are in capable hands. Just mention my name, Pastor Ben Graham, and they'll take care of you at his firm. Don't leave your financial future to chance. Tune in to the Kirk Elliott Financial Wealth Advisory Firm podcast and equip yourself with the tools to make informed decisions in today's unpredictable world. Embrace biblical finances and embark on a journey towards prosperity and financial peace of mind. Subscribe now to Real Talk with Pastor Ben Graham podcast and get ready to thrive amidst an economic uncertainty. Remember, when you go with Kirk Elliott, you're choosing financial wisdom rooted in biblical principles. Take the first step towards a brighter financial future today. You know, we're blessed here in America because we have so many great resources and it's important that we take the time to do something, not because it's making us a lot of money or not because it's convenient, but because it's right. Well, I mean, I think you're obligated to do so. So one of the things you said a little bit earlier and 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 a lot of almost all of what you said is it, it, it really hits home to me is, you know, you can't turn a blind eye once you're aware of something you know, to whatever extent, I mean, you may, you may be busy with your life. You may be busy trying to make money. You be, may be busy trying to take care of your own affairs. But once you're aware of something, you feel obligated and are obligated uh, naturally and spiritually to, to go ahead and try to do something, even if it's an incremental change. And so for me, once I learned about this, I've been trying to educate myself even more. And again, you know, there are a lot of things coming out about this issue and, and rightfully so, but um, it, you know, I feel like, this this uh, this movie or docu movie or however it's split up in parts it can go on forever. There's so many different stories. The more we get on these zooms and talk with more family members and more experiences, the more content we have to get out there to explain how this uh, the affects all of these these family members and their family members and and then their family family members. Yeah. So uh, the effects are exponential. And um, I I love how you said you know it's great to have feel good content and that's great you know, growth comes out of your comfort zone a lot of times when, you, when you're outside of your comfort zone and to learn and be aware. And, and, and look, everybody uh, has things in their lives that make them uncomfortable. And the news is often dreadful to watch. And, and so, you know, there's a lot, you're inundated, especially now with social media with negativity. And, uh, you know, in, in the last thing you want is another thing that kind of is, is a burden on your soul. But with this, I think that, you know, the more education you have on it, the more people can get involved. And it, it's rewarding in a lot of different ways, even if it's a selfish way, you feel good about doing something for somebody else, and it makes you feel good about yourself. You know, then it then it has value there as well. We're so glad to have Jeff Timmons uh, joining us today. And uh, Jeff was uh, uh, with 98 Degrees, still singing all these years later. So Jeff, uh, before I let you go, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience? And is there a way that people can follow what you're doing? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm available on all the social media. It's at Jeff Timmons for the most part, or Jeff Timmons on Facebook, or official Jeff Timmons. I mean, they're, diff- they're different variations of socials. I'm very active on there. And as these projects evolve, I'm sure we'll start putting things on websites and, and developing platforms where people can go directly. And, and uh, you know, look, we're not, we're not looking for donations. We're, we're At this point, we're just looking to educate and get the message out there. So, um, you know, we're going to do our best to put, you know, short form content content online that sort of acts as a driver for where where this is going to live eventually and 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 where people can see the long form of it but uh you know just get involved with the with the efforts and and with the cause and you know when you can we're not we're not you know sort of uh getting on a soapbox and you know really kind of putting a platform out there for an agenda you know if we get this out there the right way just learn as much as you can for it and again you know thanks for having me on I'm so appreciative. And again, congratulations on your personal life and your success up to now and everything in the future. Well, thank you. I'm looking forward to working with you and hope you have a safe trip today. And thanks for giving us time. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. I know you're probably like me. You're looking for something to watch. You flip through the channels. You're going through, what am I going to watch? I mean, I've already seen this. This doesn't sound interesting at all. And if your wife's not in the room, you're certainly not going to watch Hallmark without her. Come on. We barely like watching it with her in the room. What am I going to watch? Well, let me tell you about our latest film, Pardoned by Grace. Now, I have to give a disclaimer. When you turn it on, you're going to see this guy who's playing a cop in a mustache. And man, it looks awful. But that guy is me, so I can say that. But you're going to find a great movie. Pardon by Grace is the latest Graham Family Films movie. You can watch it on Pure Flix. And for the last month, it has been one of the top movies on their platform. I encourage you to go to Pure Flix, watch Pardon by Grace, the true story of Scott Highbarger, who was arrested 35 times. It's an inspiring story. You'll absolutely love it. I hope you'll go and watch it. And I think you're going to enjoy it. They bailed him out with two. Hi, Murder, let's go. I used to be addict, alcoholic, felon. I know. So what? Mr. Heiberger, you're back again. He's racking up the frequent flyer miles. Every one of us are behind these bars because we fell into some kind of quicksand. Maybe not the real kind, but the spiritual kind. So you choose to exercise sin. It gets bigger and bigger until it consumes you. So you exercise your faith. Guess what? It gets stronger. I got something that'll warm you up like a warm blanket. This is the word. This is the bread of life. Hey, what's up? I'm Dave. I tell you, I sure wish some more guys in the joint could understand what Jesus did so that they too could be saved, you know? Like a prison ministry. We can minister to the prisoners? I sure hope so. God's got a plan, Scott. No rule of man can deny that purpose. I'm sorry we have a problem. It's out of Florida. Some old trouble I had from years ago. Spent my whole life fighting to stay out of prison and now they won't let me back in. I don't know what's gonna happen. You do realize that Jonah felt the same, yes? He didn't want to go to Nineveh. So God sent a giant whale to swallow him up and drag him there. I, sir, am your giant whale. Pardon by grace. Hi, Burger. You're up. Hey, everybody. I'm excited now to have a special guest with us for this second segment. We're talking to Ted DeBiase Jr., who is a third-generation professional wrestler. He's the son of the Million Dollar Man, former WWE superstar, two-time world tag team champion, star of the movie The Marine 2, co-producer director of The Prince of Fame. He has the heart of David Ministries, and he is working to recruit one million mighty men to join the war in the battle against human trafficking. Ted, thank you so much for being with us today. Hey, thank you for having me, Ben. It's it's uh, just a true honor. I appreciate it, buddy. Well, we're, we appreciate you taking the time. You know, we're talking today about uh, this subject of human trafficking, which honestly, uh, as I was talking with Kevin earlier, you know, we were talking about this growing up in the, you know, kind of the central part of America. He was in Ohio. Uh, I was born in Illinois, grew up down south. You know, this was an issue that when we heard about it, thought it was happening in other parts of the world, had right. no clue it was happening here. And honestly, 
uh, was a little surprised when I first heard what was going on and really just thought that can't be true. Mm. How did you find out what was happening uh, when it comes to human trafficking, especially here in America? You know, it, it's uh, it's always been just kind of a, uh, it, it's something you don't hear about a lot, you know. And then when you find out, um, I mean, the the sound of freedom is a is a big part of that, you know. I've also uh, am a part of a production company, and uh, with with my partners that, and, and one of the guys there, uh, Steve Curlis, wrote an incredible script uh, uh, on behalf of uh, another organization that is is fighting human trafficking, and um, ended up, you know, it, it was it was not exactly what they were looking for, but he spent he talked to six different individuals that had actually experienced this here in America and um, to know what's really going on and to know this could be your your next door neighbor or uh, even children you know or relatives that uh, the, the way it's done here might be a lot different than they've even seen on Sound of Freedom but going through that process him you know writing this script and then uh, getting real real life examples, uh, we, we learned that, you know, America is the, the largest consumer and that's unacceptable when there's, you know, uh, I think it's 400,000, uh, children a year, uh, trafficked and to know that there's, there's this 30 something billion dollar industry out there and they're making money off this, uh, it, it, the the red light went off the flag went off and it's like are you serious why is this not in the freaking mainstream every single day we hear these stories about other things there's a lot of distractions but you know we've got the largest military in the world most powerful country in the world and i'm a true patriot um you know i've served veterans for since i was a spokesperson at army national guard with wwe i committed my life to that and you know, that was fighting for our freedom and, and these guys that are dying at, you know, 20 a day due to PTSD. That was something I committed my life to. And, and when when I heard this, when I started hearing the numbers, I was like, this cannot be going on right here in America, in our backyard. And at, at the Super Bowl, even it being a uh, the, the largest trafficking event here for sure i'm pretty sure i've heard it's been the globe i don't you know don't quote me on that but that's uh, that that i can't accept and i'm a dad you know and so um i look at my child now uh let's fast forward you got sound of freedom that's come out and just crushing it and it's it's in the media every day and uh, you know people are waking up to what's going on and leaving that that theater knowing wow, uh, I had no idea. And they're looking for, uh, you know, there's, there's the shock and all immediate, you know, um, feeling that you have like, surely not, surely they, that can't be going on. Um, but it is, and it's a reality and now it's okay, well, what are we going to do with it? And so, um, that, that, that kind of had, had, had peaked my, you know, um, not interest, but I just, that that's when I was made aware going through the, uh, you know, us writing this script uh, called Kitty Stroll. And, you know, we we've got a ministry. My dad started in back in the early 90s uh, when he left WWE or WWF at that time and became an ordained minister, He's traveled all over the world and, you know, uh, sharing his testimony. And, and uh, I got a uh, I literally, I can show you the notes on, on my iPhone. Um, one day I was on a plane 2014 and God said, uh, a million mighty men. And I wrote it down and I had no idea. And I just, I just started thinking, wow, you know, when you look at second Samuel 23 and David's mighty men and what they were able to accomplish, you know, Eliezer is probably my favorite. I love that story. The idea, you know, the Philistines approached and the Israelites retreated. But Eliezer stood and he fought so long that his hand froze to the sword. And then the Israelites returned, but only to collect the dead. You know, Shema, he killed 600 men, Philistines, with, his, with a spear. And uh, the other one stood his ground in the middle of the field. It, it's all about, th these were true warriors, you know. And I brought the vets up because 
I love those guys. Uh, those, those are my heroes. And I know you yourself have, have, have served and, uh, and I, and I thank you for that. And I know you have a passion for that. Um, uh, that, that for me is, you know, how, wh where are those guys? Where, where are the, where are the warriors standing up, you know, unifying together and saying, Hey, uh, wh we're not going to let this slide. There's a movie out now and it's created an awareness and there's, um, there, there's a torch that's been lit and it's on us now as uh, human beings, number one, but as children of God, uh, I can't <laughs> looking at this, at, at what goes on, being aware now and knowing what goes on. I can't, I can't sleep at night, you know, looking at my, my child every day for the past two weeks, all I can see and think about is there are millions of children right now that are being tortured in the most horrific ways daily, all daily for the, for, for, for a dollar and then being discarded once it's, once they're not usable anymore and it's tough conversations and it's going to take tough, real men, men of God, as a man of God, Jesus, I think the only time he went gangster, you know, in, in the Bible was when he, he said, Hey, it, it'd be better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and be cast into the abyss or, or, or the, 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 the sea you know, that for you to harm one of, of these little ones, for you to call, cause them to sin, you know, that's, it, it's righteous anger. And uh, so the, it, it made sense. I mean, literally it made sense. Me and my dad have been praying, you know, we, we've been through uh, hell and back, you know, in so many different ways. We've had what the world can offer and the testimonies are similar, but, you know, we're, we're, we're here for a reason. We know God has a plan for us. Heart of David Ministries. What is that heart? David was a fighter. You know, I mean, he was a, a warrior, and uh, he wasn't perfect by any means. But at the end of his life, he's, you know, he fought for the people. He liberated. You know, uh, and he stood in between uh, the the enemy and God's people, His chosen ones. And the, I believe with all my heart, you know, if if there was ever an opportunity in such a divided, divisive uh, uh, time in our, in, in the history of our country, when the Bible says a nation divided will not stand, if, if we want to have a chance, if you want to unify somebody in, in a group of men, the godly men, the ones we need to rise up and, and say, hey, uh, we're, we're not going to accept this. This is unacceptable. If you're not going to do anything about it, government, We'll do something about it. We'll open ourselves and volunteer and let God do some, something about it. We'll stand. We'll draw a line in the sand, just like Eliezer did. And no matter what enemy is coming our way, no, ma no matter how many people are turning their back on it or just saying, man, I, I hope they fix it. You know, uh, we're, we're saying, no, we're, we're, we're going to die on this hill. And so yeah. the million mighty men. You know, instead of the million dollar man, this is not about a dollar or one man. This is we need mighty men, warriors, yeah. men of God right. to step up and, and and take this fight off. You know, after watching the movie, uh, I'm reminded of two scriptures. One, the Bible says to who much is given, much is required. So because mm. we now know the truth, we may some people may not have known until recently, but we know what's going on. There's a lot required of us to now take action. And the other right. the other, there's another verse in the New Testament that says to him that knows to do good and, and does it not to him, it's sin. And so if we sit back and do nothing, now we're living in sin ourselves because mm. we're not doing something to stop it. And, you know, one of the, this is a, of course a horrendous thing, but one of the things that is already happening when you talk about God uniting people is God's brought uh, quite a few of us together, you know, uh, through a mutual friend, uh, Ted, you and I've known, known each other for a while, but through a mutual friend we met and then, uh, I got introduced to Jeff, who we interviewed a while ago, and now we've got another uh, another guest that I'm excited to talk about, uh, Kevin Ryherd, who is known as Rev, I, I hear, and uh, he's a pastor, <laughs> he's an entrepreneur, sports chaplain, and father. He spent the last 21 years working in and around professional athletics. Kevin is the oldest sibling of 13 who were sold by their biological parents and Kevin is focused on the uh, epidemic that is human trafficking as one who has witnessed it firsthand. And Kevin, first off, I just want to say thank you for being here. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ted has 
you know, talked about his recent uh, introduction to what's going on in this passion that God's given him. He in 14 had a passion for a million dollar uh, for a million men, but now uh, even more of a passion on what these men are supposed to do. But Kevin, of course, you're a story of how God can take something that's so broken that, that the devil literally uh, gave you the worst life possible. Uh, you come from a difficult background, but, but God can take something that's bad and turn it into good because your, your, your ministry now, your testimony is something amazing, but you went through a great ordeal. And I would, I want to say, first off, thank you for being here and just love to hear more about your story today. Thank you, Ben, uh, for having me. And uh, of course, Teddy, good to see you. Um, love you, brother. I wore, I wore something besides one of my t-shirts. So <laughs> you know, I dress up a little bit for church. Uh, ben, you know, everyone has a story and, and none of them are usually very easy. And we, we have challenges put before us. And this is, this is one that, uh, you know, I guess many, many years ago, I was put on my plate and it wasn't just put on my plate. So I don't bear this alone. I have 12 other siblings that have, uh, have the same story. And, you know, it, it's, it, it's ironic, uh, you know, when going through the story, it, there's tragedy, there's difficulty, there, there's brokenness, of course, there's humility, uh, there is um, identity crisis, there, there's, there's so many different pieces and caveats to this story that are unique, not only to, you know, myself, but to each one of the kids. And, and I, I don't really call them kids. I call them children, you know, siblings and, and uh, brothers and sisters. Their reality is that it is together that we actually kind of gain who we are in, in, in some kind of, uh, you know, contrast or, or some kind of, you know, metaphor really, it, it, it's about, you know, having kind of a plate kind of drop out of your hands and, you know, there's 15 pieces and, or excuse me, in this case, 13, and you have to kind of pick them up and glue them back together. And it just took some 40 years to do that. And, and now we're picking up the pieces and figuring out, and it, it's, it's not coincidental. I don't believe in coincidence. I, I believe in divine appointments that, you know, the Lord has, has really worked uh, with with the groups and, and, and with, you know, um, with Jim Caviezel and, you know, with with, with Ballard, with, with the folks at OUR Rescue, that uh, they've really brought this to the forefront. They've been the, the bleeding edge, if you will, to, sh to share this message, to overcome a lot of challenges. And, and, and actually what it did is it fortified I think in each one of us, and I'm, I don't really want to speak collectively for the kids because they'll, you know, for my brothers and sisters, but they'll, they'll come on and, and, and share their story. I'm sure where um, it, it's a lot to process. It, it, it's, it's also a lot to, um, to kind of live with when, when you don't know who you are, where you come from. And when you don't know where you are, who you are and where you come from, it, it makes it very difficult with some challenges that may face you later on in life. For instance, I, I have three sons. My third son needed kidney transplant. Well, usually they do uh, blood tests on family members. Well, uh, Mike, who you, you'll meet later, I was raised with Mike. He's my he's the second in line, and uh, he he wasn't a match. Well, have had I have known <laughs> that, they, that there were so many more, yeah, I'd invited them all, sent them letters, and, and you know, had them line up for uh, for blood tests. But that was a challenge, and and to go out and to find a match after his third after his second transplant was was even more of a challenge. And so we're here uh, because this is where God put us, and and now with the uh, with the information and, and with the story that, that God has blessed uh, 
uh, you know, the folks to, at the Sound of Freedom to come out and to share and to produce. And you have people coming together. For instance, Ted and I were on a, a phone call completely separate from any of this when one of my, it was on, well, it was on July 11th. We were talking on a, on a, on a business call when um, one of my other uh, colleagues, uh, we call it 7-Eleven Day. And uh, 7-Eleven, July 11th, uh, this past July 11th, was the 50th anniversary of uh, my biological father selling Mike and I to my adopted father. And we laugh, so excuse me if there, we have a receipt. So it, it, it even makes it a little bit more like, I, can you prove it? I, I could, you know, I could text you. Like, I think, Ted, you've got the receipt. So. We've come into a time where this country, and, and let's just bring it close to home, we as a people, we've, we've kind of fallen asleep at the wheel. We've, we've let things happen that shouldn't have happened, whether it be in our church or in our government or on the playground, you name it, the office. And, and, and God is, is asking, you know, he's been, God's a gentleman. He's going to knock he's, and he's going to ask you, can I come in? Uh, and he's going to do that usually when the devil's sneaking through the window. And uh, that the devil's not a gentleman. He, he's come to seek, kill, and destroy. So we have an obligation to answer the knock now that we may have left up to a pastor to answer that door or or to a teacher, or to somebody else in authority. When the call is now on our doorstep, it's on our welcome mat, we, we understand the epidemic now, the real epidemic. And that is that the United States is a consumer of human trafficking, the largest in the world. And bringing it home, while some may be able to say, well, that might be happening at the border, I live in South Dakota. So if it's happening in Chicago or Vermont or Seattle or Tupelo, it's happening in your hometown too, or has. We're all touched by it. We all have the we all have that sin on our on our a blemish of that sin on our lives. And as a country, yeah, I, I can't think of a better scripture verse than, you know, Second Chronicles 7.14. And, and we as a country now, this is what Sound of Freedom is. It's a clarion call. It's a trumpet call for us to come to action. And, and the first is that we must seek the face of, of God. And the, excuse me. And then, after that, uh, we, good, brother. we have to humble ourselves. It's, it's nice to sit in the box suites. but it's time to sweep the street. That's good. Absolutely. You know, that's the problem is, is we as a nation, we've gotten uh, so comfortable and I would even take it further because I don't blame the world for acting like the world, but when uh, right. quote unquote God's people in the church, you know, are uh, honestly no more walking with God than the world. That's when we have a problem. And, you know, and the church has gotten so comfortable with being comfortable that, you know, uh, We'll, we'll worship God as long as it's convenient, as long as it's easy. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, what our world needs is we need people that are willing to get out of their comfort zone and get their hands a little messy and uh, to wake up. And, you know, I have a new book that's coming out soon called Ignorance and Apathy, America's Two Deadliest <laughs> Sins, uh, because I think that is the church. I mean, I think uh, we, we kind of bury our heads in the sand and, you know, hope that if, if we don't acknowledge it, 
you know, there must not be a problem. And, and so I blame the church, you know, our, our culture in this country has shifted in such a way that I know displeases God. And, you know, that's not the world. The world acts like the world is the church. It's God's people. And, and it's time we wake up. And I think, you know, last year we, we witnessed a really amazing thing happen uh, in the courts with uh, them overturning Roe versus Wade. That's something that need to happen. America has been, you know, murdering babies for uh, a number of years now. But to me, this, this issue is right there with that. We're, what good is it if we, if we uh, stop abortion, but then the kids are born and we're allowing them to be sold into sex trafficking and into slavery and all those things. And so it's, you know, they kind of go hand in hand. And so we've got to now tackle this. And for every day that we wait, that's tons more kids uh, that are growing up um, in a life that no kid should ever have to experience, you know, and it's hard for me. I grew up in a great home. My family loved me, uh, come from a, you know, uh, uh, not only people that love me, I was in church nine months before I was born kind of thing, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was born the week of a conference that, uh, my grandfather had going on. And so, you know, church was my life. It's hard for me to comprehend somebody having parents that, that don't love them and show them proper attention. I can't even imagine parents selling their children, uh, for financial gain, uh, getting rid of them. And, and, you right. know, and in your family situation, not just once, but, at least 13 times that I think y'all know of. And, and uh, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And if I remember, I read correctly somewhere that, you know, um, your parents, uh, I think one of them was from West Virginia, one was from Alabama or something like that, but these mm -hmm. were, you know, uh, good looking uh, normal people that uh, from what I read, not, you know, nobody would have really suspected. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. I, you, you had a mother from a very affluent family in Birmingham, Alabama. You had a father who, well, you know, as the story goes, uh, Ben, 34 children. You know, really, knowing that, uh, he, he had to have something going for him. And uh, my, my biological mother was, uh, uh, you know, not just from a, a family that, you know, had, had some wealth. Uh, she's very smart, uh, you know, 140 IQ and uh, spoke four languages by the time that she graduated from high school as a valedictorian, it, I believe it was the Stavia Hill. In, in, uh, and I could be wrong about that in Birmingham. So not only that, but a very nice affluent area of, of uh, Alabama. So yes, they they had some things going for them. They they also had, just like, you know, it's triumph and tragedy. It's, it's, it's literally sometimes your your greatest gift is also your, you know, your biggest challenge. And, and for them, uh, it, it really, they couldn't get out of their own way. And, and what was, here's some of the plausibility of this, uh, you know, and just you and I meeting. The people that adopted us, uh, my father was born in 28, my, my adopted father, my mother, adopted mother, born in 30. And uh, in the 50s, they, they helped your grandfather with the tent revivals throughout, you know, Illinois and Iowa, and I think it was Indiana. So, the, I mean... <laughs> There, there are old pictures back in the 50s of, my, you know, my biological, or not, my, my adopted father and, and your grandfather together. We used to see them. So it's so, <laughs> kind of coincidental. We're now, I say that only in jest that, you know, here we are these many years later, 51. Uh, Roe v. Wade was passed on December 13th, 1971. That's when I, that's the day I was born. So, yeah. Well, I tell you. Connected. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I tell you, it never ceases to amaze me how um, God can take bad and turn it to good, how God puts uh, stories together. And I love that, you know, uh, somebody who could grow up bitter, could grow up broken, uh, you know, is serving God. And and I know I've read about what you're doing and caring for others who are broken and bitter and, and some of them who don't have you know, the background you have. I mean, sometimes people look at a story and go, man, if anybody could be upset, that guy has a right, she has a right, but, but we can't control certain things of our life. And we have two options. Right. We can either let it grow us into being stronger believers in the Lord or to be bitter and, and a bitter life we is a make, wasted life. We say, make you better, make you better. And Absolutely. if God is into restoration, which we believe he is, 
I've seen some pretty beat up old cars that have looked pretty good after, you know, a little bit of paint, some rust removers. So that's my hope because I, I know what a beat up old pickup truck I am. And, and, uh, whatever garage they park us in, whether, you know, we're, we get the first lot with the name on it or we get the back lot, um, we still have work to do on this body. And by that meaning, what God is doing in his restored, his redemptive nature through the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, amen. Well, Ted, let me ask you a question. So for guys to get engaged in the million dollar, or I keep saying million dollar, the million man, movement what's a way they can get signed up and get to be a part of that well we, we are uh this is this is brand new you know and, and honestly rev has uh really I, I call him rev i'm sorry kevin uh uh rev rev has kick-started this and just been confirmation you know with the conversations we've been having the it, it's all come into fruition so uh, it's million mighty men and we will have a, a website. I'm, it's not up today, you know, but it'll be million mighty And then um, we we created a, a banner. That's also as of last week in the process uh, because we want to get into the fight uh, trafficked trfkd.com, which uh, we just want it to be an uh, opportunity to, kind of a banner and, a, and a, a war cry to unify organizations, individuals, influencers, um, wear it, wear it, wear it on whatever. And, and we want to, we want to help support the people that are out there doing the work. We want to bring in more, you know, volunteers, uh, you know, to, uh, we're, we're learning, we're all going to learn together where we can get in, in the trenches, let's get dirty, you know, but that's, those, those are the places and, and uh, through Heart of David Ministries, you know, um, we'll offer that as, as uh, fully, you know, uh, if it, working with Operation Underground Railroad and, and other organizations, we, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're, not, we're not the organization. We're just a conduit and a servant. We want to be a servant to, uh, to the Lord, but we want to be an aid to the servants that are out there doing the work now. And, uh, you know, just use our resources and relationships and our, you know, what we have to do what we can. Uh, I shared with Rev uh, Shamgar, right? Uh, uh, yeah. A mentor of mine, Dr. Jay Strack, who I'm sure, you know, um, you know, he's got a great message around Shamgar, who was a farmer, some judges, you know, and he, he picked up a Knox code, killed 600, I think, Philistines. And, uh, delivered a nation, a rock with a, a stick with a rock tied to the end of it, delivered a nation. That's it. You know, that's all it says. Uh, but a, a farmer and uh, the, the message behind it is use what you got, do what you can and start now. You know, so we're we're just starting. Uh, I wish we had something, but it will be up in week time. So, well, good. I think you. by the time this airs, uh, it should be up. It, we're, yeah. This will be playing here soon. So that's great. Um, Rev, before we go, um, what else would you like to share with our audience? You know, there's, there's going to be a lot of people watching this, but especially there's going to be a lot of pastors watching this. And um, I think there's a challenge uh, that needs to be given to the pastors because they really are leaders. Uh, and as somebody mentioned, I think you mentioned earlier, it's not just the pastor. It's not just the teacher. Everybody needs to be involved. But but I'd love for you just to, to share a, a word to these pastors and to everybody watching um, on the importance of why they need to get in this fight. And just anything you'd like to share with us before we go, I'd love to hear from you. Well, thank you, Ben. And, and, and I want to I want to reecho. It, it's been an honor and a pleasure. And uh I guess what I would say is, is uh, for any pastor, for, for any clergy, priest, bishop, uh, nursery worker, custodian, usher, elder, deacon, God has put this into the forefront of the American view. Not because it's a movie, 
but because it's a movement. And if this land is going to heal, it starts in the house of God. It starts here where he dwells. And we come and we humble and we seek. And he says, I'll hear you. I'll turn. And I'll heal you. Mm. That's my prayer. For you. Mm. Amen. Thank you so much for that. Uh, guys, thank you all for being here today and being a part of the show. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Hey guys, I want to I want to thank you again for joining us today. Thank you for being a part of our episode. I want to thank our sponsors, Freedom Place and Old US Outdoors. I encourage you to go to their websites and check them out. Let me just leave you with this. I challenge you after what we've heard today. Listen, I challenge you to take some time and pray and ask God what you can do to get involved to help a child that's been trafficked. Ask God what you can do to not only be aware, but to be engaged. Let's quit burying our heads in the sands. And let me really challenge the pastors and you spiritual leaders. Listen, wake up, speak to your church about this issue. Speak to the platforms that you have. Let people know what's going on and let's stand up. Let's use the voices God's given us. And let's let people know that our children are not for sale. It's time we do something to stop this pandemic a real pandemic that's going on in our nation. Let's stop it and let's rescue these children and let's keep all these other children safe so that they can know a, a childhood of love, peace, and joy. And most importantly, let's teach our children the love of Jesus. Thank you again. God bless you. <laughs>